Tagorozo was a very different period in Suzuki's career because he made like 40 something films for Nikatsu in the 50s and 60s. And then he got fired. He sued them. He won, but because of this sort of pushback against the studio system, he got blacklisted for 10 years. And when he started to make films again, it was in a completely different structure. He was basically like reincarnated as an independent filmmaker. So superficially, when you look at a movie like Kagaroza, it looks more like what we associate with like, I guess, independent art house film. It has a much more muted color palette, a much more subdued rhythm, much more mysterious. But I see a, like a direct line the same sort of dream logic as Tokyo Drifter or Branded to Kill. It's almost like this weird mesh between like um, Branded to Kill and Tokyo Drifter and then like Quieten, this like atmospheric Japanese ghost tradition that it's existing and it literally is a ghost story. And it has one of the most extraordinary climaxes that I've ever seen. It has this real deep like spiritual twist in it. And it's almost completely silent after a certain point. There's just like individual sound effects, like wind blowing or, or water gushing, and then just dead silence again. And it feels really thrilling. It feels like, I mean, not to sound like an asshole, but it feels like, like pure cinema.